Patients sustaining a hip fracture have a higher risk of death one year post-fracture. One study found a 15 times increased risk during the first month. Sadly, many physical therapists do not know the 2021 guidelines for managing older patients with hip fractures. This video will give you everything you need to know. Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to Fissure Tutors. The recommendations in this guideline are graded from A to C. I will get into A and B recommendations, meaning the must or should do's. Two weeks after the fracture, chances are your patient's quad strength is reduced by 50%. Knee extension strength on the affected limb is a strong predictor of short and long-term functional performance and gait speed. Measure this and retest it during your treatment plan to get an idea of how your patient will do in the future. Regarding pain, the four-point verbal rating scale has been proven superior compared to the VAS. The guidelines recommend using this scale in all settings from acute to outpatient to monitor pain. If your patient is able to walk without human assistance, assess the gait speed and the timed up and go test. When done so, there are three questionnaires to fill in and to reassess later. When entering the post-acute setting, a few different tests should be performed. Conduct the five times sit to stand test or the 30 seconds sit to stand test. Take your pick, at least one of them should be reported. The final test is the six minute walk test. If you are a physio working in a hospital, you should participate in a multi-component non-pharmacological intervention program, including doctors, nurses, and possibly other healthcare practitioners to prevent delirium in these older patients undergoing surgery. How does one fracture their hip? More than 90% of hip fractures are due to a fall. Risk factors include older age, prior fracture after age of 50, Parkinson's disease, type 2 diabetes, impaired depth perception, and slower walking speed. Knowing and addressing fall risk factors might lower the chances of fractures. You can easily document and assess the risk of falls with the screening recommendations made by the Academy of Geriatric Physical Therapy of the American Physical Therapy Association. Having an idea of which patient will do well and which patient might need some extra attention can come in handy. This table provides the strongest risk factors to look out for. With this reduced strength, reduced mobility and reduced independence in mind, it must come as no surprise that exercise should be part of post-operative care. What types of exercise come to mind? The guidelines recommend high intensity resistive strength training, as well as balance, weight bearing and functional mobility training. Every exercise program should be structured and progressive. Do not forget this, the prescription will not change if your patient is suffering from mild to moderate dementia. You might want to know some specifics, so here are some examples from the included RCTs. can be used as balance, weight bearing and or functional training.
Let's get into the specific recommendations per face. Get your patient out of bed as soon as possible after surgery and daily thereafter, unless this is contraindicated. Exercising a few times a week is not gonna cut it. Clinicians should offer daily in-hospital exercise following surgery, with the duration as tolerated. Always treat multidisciplinary, especially in this early post-op period. You should regularly check balance, strength, functional deficits, activity limitations, and fall risk. If any deficits remain after eight to 16 weeks after the fracture, you should provide opportunities for additional therapy. Examples are outpatient services, like a private practice, a progressive home exercise program, or evidence-based community programs. Exercising is a great rehab strategy and should be encouraged. But when your patient ticks off all the boxes and is discharged, they might not really understand the importance of maintaining physical activity. Make sure to sit with your patients so you can provide recommendations to maximize physical activity and maintain a healthy lifestyle. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. I am Max for PhysioTutors and I will see you in another video. Bye.